So now we will see the relation between simple harmonic motion and circular motion. So when we derive the equation of uh, simple harmonic motion, we derive this from a circular path. Uh, and in this case, this is our origin O, this is a point B, this is a point C, this is a point D, and this is a point E, and the particle is moving in this circular path B, C, D, A. Suppose this is a point P, and uh, a, uh, a, a particle is moving from B, to this B C D B C D E path with an angular frequency or angular velocity of omega, and this is the and the uh, and this uh, O to P is our uh, radius, or we can say this is O P is our radius A. We represent this radius as A. In this case, this radius means our amplitude. Okay, and when this particle moves from this B point to this P point, so to this P point, so it cover a distance with horizontal width of horizontal width O to N. And this this P this ON is represent our displacement Y. So this is the displacement Y. So when <coughs> So what is, what is the equation? If I if I calculate this uh, displacement y, then the our y will be equals to it will be equals to a sine omega t. Okay, and we actually see this in our earlier video. This how we can uh, get this a sine omega t value. So this is the equation for our displacement. Okay, and in the same case, when we uh, we we find out the velocity, then the velocity will be a cos of a omega cos of omega t and for this acceleration our acceleration will be minus of a omega square sine omega t or we can write this thing as minus of omega square y okay and this is that actually uh, this relation this relation gives us that is yes a circular path uh, a body moving in a circular path gives a uh, is a simple harmonic motion Okay, so now here I find out that our displacement equation is a sin omega t. So that's why I I draw a sinusoidal wave. So when our body is at point B, it is so we take this is a mean point. So this mean point represents as O in this section. Then when our theta become pi by two, when our theta become pi by two, uh, we, we have to remember when we use this theta this is our radian angle so this angle is our radian angle okay so when this theta become pi by 2 so this theta become when this theta become pi by 2 so then the displacement become maximum then the displacement become maximum which is actually equals to a okay so in this case in this case this is our maximum displacement a and when when our theta equals to pi by 2 again when our theta becomes pi when our theta becomes pi then again it comes to our b point so when our theta becomes pi it comes to our b point but in the opposite direction so this direction is moving upwards there and from this this direction is moving downwards that's why from d to e d to e i uh, we see a downwards curve and from d to e point d to e when this particle moving from d to e again for angle of 3 pi by 2 angle of 3 pi by 2 it becomes maximum it becomes maximum this maximum means a maximum displace, uh, displacement a and again <coughs> this is uh, our 3 pi by 2 point and again when it goes for e to b e to b then or when it complete a full cycle of 2 pi then again it becomes zero it becomes zero and this point at this point are actually equal because it it also has the upward face and it also has the upward face so this o o x y if i represent this point as x it represent this x and as y so this o x y this curve represent a complete 
oscillation or complete oscillation uh, vibration okay i hope you understand this relation between uh, circular motion and simple harmonic motion uh, we only have to remember this value of of theta or this angle and this represent from o to y this represent our time period t so that's why this is our half of time period t by 2 and that will be our half of this t by 2 time period it will be t by 4 and that will be if i add t by 2 uh well, if I add t by 2 with this t by 4, then I will get 3t by 2. Okay, so this is the if, uh, whole equation of this uh, of this 5 point 1 point 1 2 3 4 5. This 5 point I have understood the relation now. <coughs> coming to the next part, which is known as simple pendulum. So, what is simple pendulum? So, it says that a simple pendulum consists of a heavy point mass so the mass is actually heavy point like mass is a point carrying is it this mass is actually heavy point and mass suspended by a weightless in extensible perfectly flexible thread so this is a suppose this is a point mass and we add a weightless a this is our this is our point mass and this is our point uh, weightless in extensible perfectly flexible thread about which the bob vibrates this is our bob this uh, point mass is our bob bob vibrates bob this thread this is our bob and this bob vibrates without friction and there is no friction when this pendulum is moving okay so i hope you understand the concept of simple pendulum a simple pendulum is not a practical pendulum it's a conceptual pendulum there is no practical uh, availability of this simple pendulum but theoretically or uh, conceptually think this kind of pendulum to solve our to solve uh, this uh, problem of simple pendulum okay so there is some quantities related to this pendulum one is point of suspension so what is this point of suspension the point of suspension means the point of the fixed support from the where the pendulum is suspended is called the point of suspension then again again did this definition the point of the fixed support so this is suppose this is our fixed support where our pendulum is vibrating or oscillating why the pendulum is suspended is called the point of suspension so this is this uh, suppose we represent this thing as p so this is p point is our point of suspension what is effective length? the length between the point of suspension and the center of gravity of the pendulum is called the effective length of the pendulum so <coughs> what does this mean uh, please uh, suppose this is our point of suspension and this is our thread l and this is the suppose we i zoom this point mass so so suppose this is our point uh, point of suspension p point and where the gravity actually work this this point is the point where our gravity is actually work the center point of this bob this, because this is spherical box so that's why this length from this point to this point this length is known as our effective length l then coming to the next part what is the amplitude the amplitude says that the maximum displacement of the bob on either side of the mean position is called its amplitude. Suppose this uh, this is our mean point x and this is our uh, maximum mean point where our bob is uh, maximum displacement where our bob is actually uh, oscillating or vibrating. So this maximum displacement is known as amplitude. Then coming to the uh, next one, what is computer signal starting from the one point of its path when the pendulum comes back to the same point, the pendulum is said to make a complete oscillation. Suppose this is the pendulum, and this pendulum is moving from this point to this point. This is our maximum amplitude, and again coming back to this point, and again go this maximum amplitude on the both sides, and again coming to this point where it started. So this whole uh, whole circle is known as our complete oscillation what is the time period the time required to complete one full oscillation is called the time period 
the time required to complete this whole oscillation is known as time period and what is the frequency the number of complete oscillation in one second is called the frequency i hope you understand uh, about the uh, uh, relation between circular motion and uh, simple harmonic motion and this simple concept of simple pendulum in our next video we will broadly discuss about simple pendulum and found a question for this simple pendulum uh, that's all for today's video please like this video and do subscribe to our channel thank you